Hi all you gorgeous, wonderful, amazing, special, precious people. Uh, this is the last video in our little series about the power of prayer. And yeah, I just want to share uh, my relationship to prayer and just the things that have sort of come to my mind about the benefits of prayer. And so it's about 10 years ago, maybe more, that I, I really felt, because my life was so difficult, <laughs> I felt life was just, uh, yeah, there was so much pain in my life and I needed to find God. And I have told about this on YouTube, on my first channel, about this journey and how powerful it was, uh, how I met this... Uh, couple who were the, actually the same age as my own parents and who were just filled with the love of God and just very, very, very beautiful angel-like people and who had this um, deep, deep love for God and also had, had this openness and love for humans for, for they were so open, uh, they were not judgmental at all so that just really opened all the doors for me. So I thought to myself, if, if that's a way you can be a believer, that's what I want to do. And so most Christians actually don't have an altar in their home, but I knew with myself I needed a place where that was a holy place in my home. And I can remember I felt stupid because of <laughs> our society and... People don't believe, usually don't believe in God. And I knew that there were people who thought I was stupid or maybe I was going mad or something. But I knew I had to do this. So I got a cardboard box and an old, it was an old uh, lace skirt I got from a second-hand shop and I just put the lace skirt around on the box. And I just found, I just put a little candle and just found a few things that were there. Maybe I had a a picture of Christ or something and I put it there and it was very beautiful it didn't take many minutes and it was there and I didn't always pray uh, kneeling there but sometimes I would and it, my faith sort of t took off but it was very powerful and very wonderful for me to have this place in my home uh, reminding myself uh, that, that God is there the angels are there and that I am more than my body and my life in this outer world. There's an inner world and I feel so grateful that it's there. 
and I love it. So it's uh, it's really lifting up the spirit world or bringing the spirit world into this world, the physical realm, with an altar. And you see it in many traditions. Uh, there's some holy place in the home uh, where they light a candle or maybe some incense. Uh, and then after a while the, the uh, altar actually moved up onto the table. <laughs> so where I had uh, a big sofa downstairs, the table there became the altar. So I had some lace thing, like, as you've seen on, on my prayer videos. It actually became the table that was the altar. So it, it actually, I just thought about this the other day, that I removed that little area, that uh, first altar, and it actually came onto the tables. And it's really special, I, f I feel. I, I just love having a place like this. And you can still use the table for having maybe having some food. Usually I'll put my food here because I don't want to stain this. Uh, but you can still use the table a bit. But it's sort of really there for, for this uh, little holy place. So I think that's it's really useful and helpful to have a place like that. And if it feels, if you feel like something like that, uh, I just encourage you to do it, even though people think you're stupid or strange. And you can really have it anywhere. It doesn't really matter where it is. And lighting a candle is just a very powerful thing. I remember the story of Bridget in the Celtic Christian tradition, Saint Bridget of Ireland who lit a candle and it was lit for, I don't know if it was a thousand years, but and it was only women who were allowed to, to, to um, uh, look after the candle. So she lit it and after she died they kept having it lit. Maybe it was for 500 years, I can't remember. But it's just reminding us, well the, first of all the flame is just so beautiful and it's a little, it's a little, really it comes from the sun that the light from the sun really, uh, that is really, because uh, it's fed into this animal that made the tallow or the oil and this, so yeah, it comes from the sun. But a flame is just so beautiful. And we have this flame inside us. It helps us uh, feel the flame within us, this flame of love. So, and just, I mean, just beauty. I just love beauty. Uh, and and some of the things here are from uh, my children. I have a little a little stone here. It's a, it's actually a pip from an, an avocado. One of our daughters made, and I don't see our daughter, this daughter. I don't have any contact with her, but she made this for me, and it, it says God's peace, or the peace of God on it. And she made a little bracelet also with some poppy seeds. It's a, yeah, little things our kids have made and just things I've found. Beautiful stones. This my, my our son made in Scotland. Him and I were on a trip together and he made that. And yeah, so an amazing coral that was found in the ocean. It looks like a just these little things, doesn't really matter what it is. So anyway, I want to talk about the power of prayer and why this is having a prayer, having a spiritual practice as a prayer in the morning and the evening is just a very powerful thing to do. And one of the reasons is that it, it gives you a structure. So I feel this uh, helps me, it, it, it gives my, my life a, struct, a spiritual structure. And it is a holy place when I go into the prayer. It's a holy place I go into that's there all the time. It's always there. But the fact that I've decided that I'm going to do this morning and evening has changed my life uh, in every way. It's very, very powerful, I feel. And for sure, it gives you safety. It gives you a feeling a healthy, I feel, a healthy feeling of being safe. So I must remember to 
tell you about these books, which I have shown you before, by John Philip Newell. They're the two uh, the Celtic Psalters, and these are the ones I use every day. This one has some places from the Quran, and this one is uh, also Jewish. It's uh, inspired by uh, Judaism, Jew the Jewish tradition, and I just think they're so beautiful. So, so when I'm using these, it helps me. I mean, it's beautiful to just have it very simple, the prayer, but I love having also a type of um, what do you call it um, when something is. Um, I have to get the word. Mm, formal. There's some. You make it formal, or um, like it's at a church. It's uh, when you make it in a. In you have this system where it's not just singing in, and you have this structure of the prayer. It just makes it. Um, I think. I feel there's more honor. It's uh, and some people actually also go down on their knees and pray. It's like uh, when you have this a uh, formal structure. Structure. Uh, I feel that I I'm showing more honor. It it just feels really good to me. I just made this up myself. <laughs> I really like it. And another book I've uh, used many times, which I uh, I know where it is. also just the best Shanta Gabriel and she was uh, she channeled these it, they're all from Gabriel 52 uh, lessons or um, inspirations for us and often I use these if I just feel I I just need some encouragement or I'm a little bit lost or yeah I'll just maybe maybe take a number or I might just open the book, and usually it's uh, exactly what I need. So this is just a beautiful book also. Okay, so what happens when we pray? When we pray, we step out of our outer life, which for most of us is incredibly busy. And apart, I mean, just if you go a hundred years back, you only really had your immediate uh, surroundings and you didn't know so much about what was going on in the world. But today we have this enormous awareness of things going on all over the planet and really all over the universe. And we have all our daily activity. So when you have a, a prayer, time of prayer, you're stepping out of that. You're simply shifting your focus from the outer world and into the inner world because you've decided that this is there's a world in here and I have to go there and when I've been here for a while I can step back into the outer world and the longer I've practiced this the more I'll be able to blend the two worlds together but the prayer is like you step out of the outer world and into the inner world and what's in this inner world well it's your into your soul your soul being which is your true being and your soul is enormous you you have this physical body and you think your soul is the same size it's not it's huge <laughs> and of course it's it's a whole world and your soul being is directly connected to God so when you you become quiet when you go in here you sense God much more well I do anyway so it's like saying, God, I'm here. I want to listen to you, and I want to thank you. So it's stepping out. I've written a lot of things down. I need my paper here. And and what I I feel is the most important to focus on is is the gratitude, as to feeling, and expressing what you feel grateful about, and even just feeling grateful to say thank you. Thank you for this very moment, that you're there, God, and that you love me. 
and that I know that you're guiding me and that I'm never alone. So it's very much focused on the thanking and as I've mentioned before because it's so important that we not if we use our prayer to say, oh my God, help me, I haven't got this, I haven't got that, I haven't got that. <laughs> you're going into the lack and you're really not in a heighten, you're not really connecting deeply to God because you're still very much in your, you're in your in, you haven't let go of your lack. So it's really going to this power station that's within you reminding you that you are this power station yourself. It's in you. So, and, and I'll just, yeah, mention this, that what is so beautiful about having a prayer, uh, uh, this spiritual practice, is that no matter how you feel in life, if you feel sad, you know you can come here and and you can be comforted because you will be comforted. And if you're joyful, you have something to say, somewhere to go to say thank you. And if you're worried for someone or worried about something in your own life, you can come here and God, as you will sense, says don't carry your worries. And Jesus said this many times, put your worries into my hands because you're not meant to worry. It's, it's okay. You feel worried, and we are here, and we love you. So, um, and when we've said thank you so many times, we can ask for whatever we like to ask for. We can ask for help for anything. And it's been said many times, or I've heard this many times, that the angels can only really help us when we ask. So, it's okay to ask. Please help me in my healing process. Please help me feel a deeper love. Please help me let go of the worries, whatever. Uh, and the beautiful thing is if you, you are worried, which many women are, worried about other people, maybe our children, it's so powerful that we can come to God and say, I put my child into your hands, God, because I can't do anything, and I really know I should not worry. So thank you that you love my child, and thank you that you will look after my child always. So, oh, I just love this, that we're meant to put our worries into God's uh, loving care. So, and we're not meant to carry burdens on our shoulders. We're actually meant to come, so we actually come here and put our burdens in the arms of God. Um, yeah, and, and as we are in this prayer, um, prayer state, I feel that we're rem reminding ourselves that we are loved, and we're never alone. We're looked after. We're in this world of beings around us that are helping us and also uh, we're rem reminding ourselves that we are here for a reason we're here sitting here praying right now in this moment and our life is as it is because we're here to learn so we're students and God is a teacher so uh, we thank for all that we have learnt knowing that we always have more to learn. And anything that is difficult in our life is only a learning process. And the more we see it as a learning process and wish to embrace it as that, uh, the more we will learn. If we, if we take our problems as we just wish to push them away because they're so annoying and so horrible, <laughs> they'll just keep coming. But when we say it's okay, I have this problem because there's something I have to learn. I just can't see it now. So please help me, God, to see what is it I have to learn. Just get some more light on.
Okay, so when we quiet, quieten our, our mind and we come into this, uh, this, come into this inner space, this holy place within us, we feel God's presence much more, as I said. So you feel his nearness. The more you let go of your mind and your busyness and you just are, the more you'll sense his presence. And you sense that you're not alone. You sense that, see, what we're doing is we're actually coming and drinking from the well of God, the well of love. We come and actually uh, quench our thirst. And God fills us with this nourishment. So we come to give our gratitude. And as I was explaining before, we give our gratitude and we are nourished at the same time. So our soul is, well, we are cleansed, we are healed, and we are nourished. So we go for food. <laughs> we go for the inner food when we pray. So we feel, that's what I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel I'm, I'm being healed, I'm being calmed. The peace within me grows because... I feel God clear, more clearly, and He is peace. He's pure peace. And of course, we, when we feel energized, we feel greater power. The power that's in us grows. We feel very powerful when we, when we do this. Uh, Yeah, so that was really, yeah, so after we've been here for a while and we've been drinking from this God's love and light and we feel replenished, uh, we can go into our outer world again, uh, in a way, uh, born again. We just uh, become, become balanced, energized comforted. It's just, I think, I mean, if you could measure the cell, what's going on in the cells, you, there'll be a, a huge difference from when you go into the prayer and when you go out. And people who can see angels and connect with them, they say that the, that's the best thing they know is when you come to prayer. You pray, they love it. So the angels will be singing around you if you could see them, which some people can. So you're just you're in this being bathed with God's light and love. And one thing I, I forgot to mention is, of course, God's guidance. In whatever you're asking questions about in your life at the moment, the clarity is very, very great when you're in prayer. And if you don't get answers during the prayer, you know that when you step out into your outer world, the answers will come, and they do come. So this was our last video and uh, I hope if you don't have a, a prayer practice, I hope you feel uh, maybe this would be uh, fun or yeah, maybe try it. And uh, uh, as I've mentioned before many times, uh, do what's natural and feels right for you. But this was just the way I, I love to do my prayer and, and what I feel that how it all that it gives me in my life. So take care my friend and I'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye.